This is Hino's Sport bringing you that heat and that fire. My buddy and me. <laughs> right, right, right. That's Terrence Buck Crawford, dog. <laughs> I keeps the foot on the what? On the next. I keeps the foot on the what? On the next. We got to keep the foot on the damn next, dog. And uh, not ruff, ruff, ruff. not that little chihuahua like Terrence Buck Crawford barking behind the fence. But uh, like a pit bull, uh, like a Tibetan mastiff, dog. We applying what? Unlimited pressure. Because pressure does what? It bursts pipes, folks. We got to burst the damn pipes. Because every time somebody's telling a pandering lie, he knows his sport. Got to give you that he knows his sport truth. Let me say it again. Because this needs to marinate in the corpus callosum and in the cerebellum. Hear me and hear me. Well, every time somebody's telling you a pandering lie, he knows his sport. Got to give you that he knows his sport. Cold hearted, unadulterated, and cutthroat truths. Remember, he knows his sport is the ultimate truth teller, dog. I come in what? Truth telling fashion. So here's the truth of the fact of the matter. Bo Mac, higgity fucking hush. Let me say it again. Bo Mac, higgity fucking hush. How you going to sit here and say, now all of a sudden, Sean Porter is put on the time. He's put on the clock. Listen, man, the only reason why you're doing that is because the deep thinkers, the real G's, the super real G's, and the ultimate real G's out here in these boxing streets, they caught up to the foolery, man. We understand the lazy top rank promotional plan. Basically, Bud was expecting to get out of the bed, not even brush his teeth, dog, and step into the Earl of True Spence fan. Earl of True Spence fight. Nah, y'all didn't catch that, dog. <laughs> that one needs to marinate in the corpus callosum and in the cerebellum, dog, in the medulla obligata. Terrence Bud Crawford was expecting to get off of his Happy Meal ass out of the damn bed and take his rabbit ass into the Earl of True Spence fight without brushing his damn teeth. Do you know how offensive it is to get up in the morning and don't brush your teeth and then just go out? That's what Terrence Bud Crawford was trying to do. He was trying to pull this Tom Foolery and he's still trying to pull it right now. He's going on this nonsensical tirade. I'm going to 160. If you fell for that, you either a Bud Man fan or you you just you're just a dodo head, man. A brain full of mush and a brainwash following. That's what you are at your truest and your most properest levels. Because anyone that has a brain, anyone that could think can see the foolery behind what he was talking about. They could see how are you gonna go to green mean machine and then all the way up to 160. Do you know who's at 160? So your ass gonna fight Jamal Charlo. Your ass is gonna fight Sergey Derevinchko. Your ass is gonna sit there and fight Demetrius Andrade. <laughs> Your ass is going to fight Canelo Alvarez. Come on, man. Don't make me laugh. Dog. <laughs> this is Comedy Central, man. Terrence Buck Crawford has not proven nothing at 147. This is what 147 is about for him. A lame duck Jeff Horn. A one-legged gimp Jose Benavidez. A five-year past his prime of Amir Khan and a green, mean machine. T today is get on Terrence Buck Crawford day, dog. Let me say it again. Get on Terrence Buck Crawford day. Is Terrence Buck Crawford my second favorite welterweight? Yes. But I'm not going to sit here and not give you cold-hearted, unadulterated, and cut those truths. Remember, I'm not a reverse bias fan. I'm not a detractor. I'm not spewing pandering narratives. Because here's the thing when you're a reverse bias fan and you're spewing what we call detractorisms and you're sitting here and spewing pandering narratives, you have to stick to the script. But when you're telling the truth, you don't got to stick to no damn script. Ooh, what I said was so deep and profound. Blah, 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 blah. I need to rewind that one, dog, because this one needs to stick, dog, in the corpus callosum and in the cerebellum. When you're a reverse bias fan, a detractor, right, and you're going with a pandering narrative, you have to stick to the script. Otherwise, guess what? The narrative doesn't hold because the narrative is already on shaky ground. It's not on solid foundation. Let me say it again. The narrative is already on shaky ground. It's not on solid foundation. So you have to stick to the script and continue with the shakiness of it. But when you stay on what we call solid, rocky foundation, which is cold-hearted, unadulterated, and cutthroat truths like he knows his sport, you can go wherever you want. This is what makes you nomadic. This is what makes you transparent because you're continuously being what? Consistent and authentic as fuck. Terrence Buck Crawford is not being that. He's being a fighter that's, being, that's doing what Bob orders. Let me say it again. He's doing what Bob orders. Bob is telling him what to do and he's doing it so that he can try to push an agenda. And he's clout chasing Earl of True Spence's name. Earl of True Spence is on a temporary sabbatical. Leave that man alone. Why does his name have to come out your mouth? 
because I told you guys, man, the welterweight was going to be in a standstill mode. Now Terrence Bill Crawford trying to steal Earl the Truth Smith's opponents. Now trying to go after Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao didn't want you the first time. So you think he gonna want you now? <laughs> Let me say it again. Manny Pacquiao did not want you the first time. You think he want you now? You know why? Because you ain't marketable, dog. You the sixth most marketable fighter on top rank. High risk, low reward. What the hell is Manny Pacquiao going to gain by fighting your ass? Other than him getting the ass whooping. He ain't going to get no money on top of the ass whooping. And I still think Manny Pacquiao will give it to your ass because of the speed and because of what he can do in terms of punches and bunches and things and things of that nature. You win the fight because you should win it. Age and attrition, you're the younger fighter and you could throw punches in between punches and you could put acceleration on your punches. So I expect you to have to give him fits and beat him. But the truth of the fact of the matter is you don't bring nothing to the table. So crawl your ass. That's why I tell motherfuckers, crawl your ass to the negotiation table with Earl the True Smith. You didn't want to do that. You didn't want to accept your 40% role. You're going to come out and agree with Bomac and agree with what Bob orders and say, oh, it's 50-50. It was never 50-50. This is why you screwed yourself over. Then you re-signed with top rank. You double screwed yourself over. Let me tell you guys something, man. Terrence Buck Crawford is a Terrence Fraud Crawford. Let me say it again. Terrence Buck Crawford is a Terrence Fraud Crawford because his ass re-signed with top rank because he knew damn well he could duck these guys. And then you were sitting there and you got Bo Mack running his damn mouth, running his cheeseburger mouth saying, oh, well, uh, Keith Thurman, ain't nobody checking for him. Danny Garcia, ain't nobody checking for him. Those are the top welterweights. These are the guys that you need to fight. If it was up to me, I would run Terrence Buck Cropper's rabbit ass through Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, or you, Dennis Ugas. And then you get Earl the True Space. Let me say it again. Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, or you, Dennis Ugas. And then you get Earl the True Space. Because guess what? Now you've given me three heavyweight lifting fights. Now you deserve the big fish. Now the big fish can come out. Because now you're bringing something to the table in terms of heavyweight lifting. And you're bringing something of marketability to the super fight. This is what these dodo heads, these brain full of mush and these brainwashed Bud Man fan followers don't get. When a man comes out of his mouth in nonsensical tirade and says, I don't need Keith Thurman. I don't need Sean Porter. I don't need Danny Garcia. I don't need you, Dennis Ugas. Then who the hell do you need? That's the lion's share of the upper echelon of the welterweight division. And if you don't want to fight them, then that means we know exactly why now you resign with top rank so that you can avoid litmus test you don't want to be beat up because we already know you getting ready to be three fights away from being irrelevant or obsolete let me say it again you're three fights away from being irrelevant or obsolete we know this and we know bob Aaron's going to throw you away like your laundry like your trash we know this is going to happen but the, here's the thing bo mac don't be trying to sit here and act like sean porter needs to be on the clock because last time i checked regardless if you guys are my buddy and me the point is, Sean Porter actually has leverage in this situation. You know why? Because of the resume he has at welterweight and the last fight that he generated with Earl the True Spence. He got leverage in that situation. So if y'all fight Sean Porter, regardless if you're a bell holder or not, Sean Porter's the A-side. Let me say it again. Regardless if y'all the bell holder or not, Sean Porter's the A-side because his numbers are better than yours. So y'all got to crawl to the damn negotiation table and make some shit happen with Sean Porter. It's not the other way around. Sean Porter has earned his weight. Although he's an ineffective aggression style fighter, if that Sean Porter shows up, the one that fought Earl the True Spence, y'all gonna be in a whirlwind of trouble. Ain't gonna be no Crawford gonna beat Sean Porter more definitively than Earl the True Spence. You ain't gonna get no more definitive than Earl the True Spence because Terrence Buck Crawford is not built like Earl the True Spence. You gotta be built in the vernacular of tactical aggression, technical punching placement, and body snatching work, the levying onslaught of the punishment style. If you don't have that levying onslaught, then and you're not built for tough, big, strong, and durable like an Earl of True Spence, you can't handle what Sean Porter's bringing to the table. Because let me tell you something. If you ain't built up right, Sean Porter gonna expose your ass. That's the type of fighter he is. So again, Bo Mack, you get the biggest... Higgity hush of the damn day. This is He Knows the Sport. Checking out.